Hello guys, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Hearts of Iron 4 as Bulgaria. Before we begin, I just want to thank the nice people at Games Plan for providing me with a copy of this game. If you would like a copy of this game, follow the link in the description to go to Games Plan and get it 20% off, so you don't have to just watch endless YouTube videos of this game. You can go pick it up for yourself at a much cheaper price. Anyway, without the way, let's begin. So, I've been playing this game... A lot recently. I've mainly been playing as Greece, and I was gonna do a Let's Play on Greece, but there's already a few people doing Greece, and uh, in comparison to Bulgaria, Greece is much easier. So let's make it completely impossible for us. So we're gonna go new game. Gonna go in 1946 because that gives us uh, some time to actually do some stuff. And we're not gonna pick any of these. We're gonna go to other countries. And Bulgaria. So, leader Boris III, we are not aligned an authoritarian regime with no elections with the Tsar Boris loyalists. So, let us begin. We shall uh, have the historical AI, uh, AI focus on, but we won't have Iron Man on for the sake of the Let's Play. So, let's go. Now, I am going to be trying to explain this game two new people, so if you've already seen, you know, other videos on this and you know how the game pretty much works, I'm going to apologize for the next one or two parts because I'm going to be explaining the mechanics for those who don't know and will get lost as I play through the game. Uh, so I'm going to be explaining to the best of my ability at least, so uh, take that for how you will. So first thing you want to do in any Darkest Hour, Hearts of Iron game, uh, whatever it is, research. Now, as Bulgaria, you only have two slots. That is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Uh, all the major nations have at least three. I think France has three and the rest have four. Uh, other minor nations vary between three and two. Uh, but two is the lowest, I believe, you can have. So we don't have much research. Anyway, we'll get into this. So we get to have research in the infantry, which will be uh, just the equipment they use. Uh, the support battalions, tanks, artillery, and land auctions. We don't have any of these, by the way. We don't have even the Great War tanks from 1918. We don't have any sort of artillery. And we don't even have any doctrines. As for the Navy, uh, we don't have any. We have no ships. No doctrines for the ships. We do, however, have the tech for a 1943 biplane fighter. Uh, so that's something, but no doctrine. And on the engineering and industrial front, we have nothing. So where I'm going to begin is in, in the industry sector here. So I'll go for the electronic engineering. I'm going to go for electronic mechanical, uh, mechanical engineering. That gives us minus 2% to our research. And since we've only got two research slots, it's going to be pretty important. So I will pick this. Okay, second research slot. We'll go to industry. Next thing I want is this. Basic machine tools, because it gives us... Plus 5% to our production efficiency cap. We'll get to production efficiency in a moment. At the moment, this is important. Okay, by the way, I don't know top strats for Bulgaria or any sort of nation here. I'm just going with what I've learned for now. Uh, so this isn't, the, this isn't necessarily the correct way to play a nation. It's just how I'm playing a nation. So, next thing we need to do is go to civilian factories. Now, it says here... Civilian factories are used for trade and building constructions. So, we've only got four that we can use, it says here. Oh, sorry. Four in, in use, four. But we own ten. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build more civilian factories. Because in the early days... But, uh, well, let me say this. Civilian factories are used to build everything from anti-air to industry to military factories, fortifications, all of it. But at the beginning of the game... I believe it's best to just build up civilian factories because if you're in 1946, for example, you're not going to be at war, hopefully, anytime soon. So you want to build up your construction base. So all of the slots they have available is going to go to civilian factories. Eventually more unlock as the game progresses. Uh, but for now, I just want civilian factories. Next, we're going to go to national focus. Now, everybody besides the main powers have the common tree. So, uh, Britain, France, the USA, 
uh, Germany, Italy, Japan, and Russia all have their own unique trees to their own nation's history. But everyone else follows this tree. And we have uh, the Army Focus, the Aviation Focus, the Naval Focus, the Industrial Focus, or the Political Focus. Now, we're not going to be bothered with any sort of army at the beginning of the game, so all of these three are out for now. Uh, so we need to decide between Industrial Effort or Political Effort. Now, this one gives me uh, plus 50% to my next Industry research. And it also gives me access to just uh, civilian factories afterwards, and military factories. And eventually, uh, extra research slots, which will be very important. Alternatively, this gives me political power, which I can use to shift my ideology and uh, get ministers to give me buffs. Now, at the beginning of the game, I'm going to go for political effort. So I can get the extra political power, because you need about 150 to even hire another minister. So I'm going to go for this. Uh, by the way, I'm planning to go National Socialism, or Fascism in this one, and I'm going to be a hardcore Axis member. Like, I mean hardcore, if, you know, if we might be fighting in every front, may besides Japan, that's kind of impossible to get to from here. But, uh, we're going to be fighting everywhere. You know, the current war in Russia, and we're, you know, in North Africa or in France. I will produce men, you know, with no equipment and half a day's training to go fight on the Russian fronts. You know, we'll, we'll be like that. I... I do anticipate losing this game, by the way. Because uh, Bulgaria is pretty weak, and if I'm joining the Axis, I basically have no chance, I would say. I haven't seen the Axis win against the Soviet Union yet. It could happen this game, though, so I'm holding out hope there. So, we're going to go with political effort. And we'll go from there. Uh, next thing I want to do is look at my production. So, here... This is different to, say, Dark Tower, which I've been Let's Playing recently. Uh, in Dark Tower, you only have to produce supplies. And supplies is everything. You know, it's your ammo, your food, your equipment, it's all of it. Here, you have to produce everything. If you want to have guns for your men, well, you gotta assign a factory to produce guns for your men. If you want trucks, assign a factory. You want tanks, assign a factory. You want a ship, assign a naval dockyard. You've got to do all of this. There's no, there's no just common blob generalization of supplies, uh, which you can see here in the logistics. Currently, we have one gun, or one box of weapons, uh, depending on how you view it, in reserve. That's our, our entire reserve. One. Uh, we have no extra motorized equipment, we got no extra, well, we've got one extra supply equipment, and five convoys. So that's our stockpile. Pretty pathetic. And we only have three military factories and zero dockyards. We cannot even think of producing a navy, even if we had the research to produce a navy. So, currently, Bulgaria is pretty bad. Uh, what's worse is we don't even have any materials. If I take a look here... I don't know any of the shortcuts, by the way. Uh, Bulgaria only has the natural resources of two aluminium. We are one of the poorest nations, at least uh, in resources, in the entire game. Because we're behind in everything. If we want to get any sort of material, we have to trade. So we'll go to that now. Uh, currently, the biggest thing we need is steel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to steel. And I can trade with any one of these nations. But since I'm going to be a hardcore Axis member, I might as well start how I mean to go on and start trading with Germany. So Germany, I will trade you one of my civilian factories. Which they get essentially the use of. They get a civilian factory. In exchange, I get 8 steel, which is more than I need. That'll give me a surplus of free. So I'll do that. And there we go. So when I start the timer, here, uh, I will have all the resources I need to produce the weapons and the, you know, all the trucks, at least in the steel part, and the supplies. And is that about everything? I think I'm almost there. Here is all the, uh, the ministers I was talking about, by the way. We currently don't have anyone. But as soon as we get at least 150 power, we can hire people to uh, change our ideology support. Uh, cats of industry, which will help us. I definitely want that, by the way. I want uh, the extra construction speed there. There's a backroom backstabber, which will help us get more political power. Uh, there's also all of these, which will help with our research. And then there's, like, military theorists, which will, uh, for example, an infantry expert helps with attack and defense. All of this will be very important to get. But for that... We need political power, 
So we gotta get to that at some point. I think I've covered just about everything here. So, one moment, I'm gonna get a drink, and then we'll actually start going with the military. Okay, I've done ten minutes of explaining here, but we're not quite done yet. So, the next thing I want to do is go to my military. Currently, we have twelve divisions, two horses, ten infantry here. So, what I need to do is give them, uh, well, make them into an army, and then assign a commander. So, we've got two here, both are... Fairly experienced here, we got a three and a four. Uh, we've got a field marshal and a general. Now, there is a difference between the two here. A general can only have 24 divisions under their control before they start getting severe penalties for overextended command. Whereas field marshals can have as command as many men as you can possibly give them. Uh, so, if you're going to have a massive front, say the Russian front, you want a field marshal if you're Plan to have a one commander for the entire army. If plan to have like two, uh, you know, you maybe be able to get away with generals. Now the difference is the reason why you don't promote everyone to a field marshal is because generals can be specialized. For example, here our general is a Panzer leader, so he is very good with tanks. We don't have any tanks, so I don't know how he managed to get that, but uh, he is a Panzer leader. And generals can become like desert foxes. They become uh, can become mountaineers. Rangers, all sorts of those things. So if you want a very specialized general, say one that's really good in like North Africa, if you want a theater there or uh, in the jungles of Brazil or something, you pick a general and give him like a small but really professional squad and he can do some ama uh, more amazing work than a field marshal. Now, the field marshal can't get these really specialized sort of uh, traits, but they can get more general ones. So they can have, what is this one? A defensive doctrine, so they can have a massive... They can have more uh, entrenchment than a general can have. They can also have better defense in general. They can also have better attack in general. So they're more of a, a general, you know, a, a close... No, I don't mean a general in terms of rank, but they're more general about their traits. So that's a trade-off. Now we're going to have the general here, because he might be able to help us out a little bit more, because I am planning... To go to war with Greece. So we're going to set a front line at Greece. And another cool feature. If you if this is people from Darkest Hour. Uh, everyone will know that I've been. Micromanaging my entire army. Since day one. You don't have to do it here. Here you can set a front line. So all the men here will go up to the front line. And then you can set an offensive line. Say I want. To go here. And we'll, I don't know. We'll end it about here. So now. If we invade Greece, and I tell them to execute this plan, they will do this. They will go from the front line, and take all of the land here, until they stop here. And that, that is their plan. That is their, that is the grand plan we have for now, when invading Greece. And uh, what will happen is, as the, uh, as they go, in fact, I'll start the timer now. Now, they'll all move up to the border, and when they're there, in fact, I might even start doing it now, they'll get a plan preparation attack bonus. So they'll do, you know, uh, mock invasions, military drills, all that sort of stuff. And they'll get ready for the invasion. And when it happens, we'll get a bonus, we'll take out the Greeks, and hopefully wipe them out up to here, and then I can set another offensive target, maybe for Athens or one of the ports here. And we can hopefully kill Greece. It's very important that I do kill Greece, because if I take another look at the resources... Greece is extremely rich. 20 iron, 24 iron, or steel. A lot of chromium, a lot of tungsten, a lot of uh, aluminium. So, very important to take Greece. That's not even including the factories they own. Which will definitely boost, uh, boost my military production. So, it's all very, very good if I can get all that. Oh, yes, production efficiency. I didn't get to that. So, production efficiency, this little bar here, uh, determines how efficient your factories are at producing... Uh, goods, for example. Uh, if the production efficiency goes up, it, it'll be better when I get to show you how it actually works. But, uh, say I may, uh, assign a new factory to produce guns here. It'll have very low production efficiency because it's only just started. But as time progresses, it'll get more efficient and it'll produce more guns. So, at the moment, one factory is producing 5.5 uh, guns or boxes of guns a day. 
Uh, but if I assign another factory, it'll probably go up to like six. And then over time, it'll be able to produce like 11 altogether. So it all comes down to that. That's why it's important to have a production efficiency. And, okay, I think I'm done explaining stuff, at least for now. More stuff will come up uh, as this goes on, but I believe I've explained just about everything I need to for now. So, my mouth is incredibly dry from explaining all this. Uh, and that is the end of this part, so thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed, and next time, the preparations for the invasion of Greece and simply trying to get Bulgaria going, because we don't have much, especially militarily. Only freak military factories, that is terrible. So, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys.